Hi, everyone. I hope you've had a great time at OCP this year. Thanks for taking the time to join us this afternoon. My name is Abe Garcia. I'm your hardware engineer at Meta, and I'm joined by Jordan Inglis, Senior Marketing Director at AMD. Today, we're here to talk to you about Sensor Dome. Sensor Dome is a single socket server for the Yosemite V4, which is Meta's next generation compute platform, and it's based on AMD's fifth generation Epic CPU, Turin. Now, before I dive into server details, I want to give a quick recap on the Yosemite V4 platform that was presented last year at OCP by my colleagues Kiran Bimuri and Chen Yu Shu. We wanted to develop a platform to support higher TDP CPUs, higher memory capacity, and higher NIC bandwidth. Additionally, we wanted to keep it modular to be able to support various use cases that may come along in the future. So in this image, you'll see the platform overall. In this specific picture, we have various blade configurations plugged in, just to give you an idea of the options possible with the system. Here we have an exploded view of the platform. So we have eight blades at the that are front accessible and serviceable. They slide into the NIC tray, and that slides into the chassis overall. At the rear, we have access to the Medusa module and the fan module. Medusa module consisting of the, um, essentially the power cable that plugs from the bus bar into our system. And here in all its glory is Sentinel Dome. So in this specific picture, we have Sentinel Dome plus the um, expansion board called by Lua Falls. So that consists of the two A6 and the DIMMs attached around them. So one of our primary goals was to keep costs down. So the sharing of hardware resources really helped with this. For instance, the platform has one BMC for all eight blades, where the BMC resides on the management board. And this is the BMC still has communication and control to each blade. Power for all eight blades comes from a single, comes from a single power conversion board called the Medusa board. Medusa board also has built-in redundancy, where it has two power zones, each power zone capable of powering up to four blades. All fans are attached and powered from the Medusa power board, and all NICs are connected to the spider board. Spider board is essentially the back plane of the system, and up to four NICs can be supported per chassis. Here we have a high-level block diagram of Sensor Dome. So the server architecture consists of, a, consists of one BIC used for server management. It's essentially an extension of the BMC. Additionally, we have one CPLD for GPIO management control and also sequencing. Sentinel Dome consists of 12 DDR5 DIMMs, each DIMM having I3C connectivity to the CPU and BIC through a MUX network. We also have a, um, also from the, the, the BIC, we have I3C going to the, the BMC and I3C bus going to the BICs on the expansion boards. This is used for a sensor and an I3C going to the CPU. This is our APML bus to the CPU for out-of-band um, telemetry and management of the CPU. We have a SPI interface from both the CPU and BIC to an onboard flash chip to load BIOS from, in addition to a TPM module which stores firmware measurements. Also on this SPI bus is a header for a platform root of trust, which allows for additional security capabilities. We also have on board a USB hub, which is considered downstream from the, from the BMC. This is connected to the Sentinel Dome BIC, as well as the BICs on the expansion board. And we can use this for faster firmware updates in, addi in addition to another out-of-band communication method. Here's a close-up view of the Sentinel Dome. So I'm gonna go clockwise and talk through some key features. First is an Testing, here we go. Um, so here, first item uh, highlighted is the XMAX connector, and just to the left of it is a retimer. So this retimer is capable of providing eight lanes of PCI Gen 5. This goes to the spider board where we have our NICs connected. We also have eight lanes bypassing the retimer. Th these lanes are capable of up to Gen 4 speeds. So this path provides a Another path, a low-cost path, if you want to avoid a retimer, if, you, if your application doesn't require as much bandwidth. Next is another XMAX connector, in addition to another retimer just to the left of it. 
This free timer is capable of up to 16 lanes of PCI Gen 5. This connection is, um, allows for potential future expansion options that would utilize the sidecar configuration. C highlights a, an onboard E1.S SSD, which we use as a data drive. This data drive um, is this data drive is useful for any applications that require any, any flash storage. Both D and E show an MCIO connector and cable. Both cables providing eight lanes of PCI Gen, Gen 5 to the Wailua Falls expansion board. So on the Wailua Falls, we, they go to essentially two CXO ASICs. Each ASIC has four DDR4 DIMMs. So we use these two uh, PCI links as CXL links. F shows another MCIO connector and cable, providing another eight lanes of PCI Gen 5. This is going to another onboard E1.S SSD, or data drive as we use it, and that data drive is indicated here by H. G shows a multi-track connection. This is capable of providing both power and another eight lanes of PCI Gen 5. This would go to another expansion board, which we call the Floating Falls. Floating Falls consists of one CXL ASIC and its own set of four DIMMs. So essentially, if you cut that Willowit Falls in half. An I is a boot drive for the Sensone Dome. It's connected to the server through a cable and a 1C connection. And we also have another four lanes, a PCI Gen 5 traveling through this. So here I'll go through some um, configuration options that are possible with Yosemite V4 and Sensone Dome. First, we have a high compute server type. This consists of just the blade. In this image, you can see the front expansion area where Wailua Falls was previously is, is not there. So it consists of just a Sensone Dome. This would be for high compute server workloads. Next is a high memory server type. This consists of memory on the board and also CXL attached memory plus flash storage. For any applications that require additional flash, we have the direct attached flash server type and disaggregated flash server type. For a direct attach, we have the we have a expansion board that we would use in the front expansion area to add flash capacity to, while disag would use both that front expansion area in addition to space in the sidecar for even more flash capacity. And then we have the accelerator server type. Here we can use accelerated modules in that front expansion area, in addition to be able to use it in the sidecar configuration, and of course, any flash capacity that you may need for your application. As you can see, there is a lot of flexibility designed into Sensone Dome. This provided us the luxury of being able to tweak our configuration to find an optimized balance between CPU performance, memory availability, and NIC bandwidth. For our optimized configuration, we settled on two CPU SKUs, a 225-watt SKU for compute workloads and a 300-watt SKU for high-memory workloads. Our compute SKU consists of utilizing 10 DDR5 operating at 6,400 megatransfers per second, while our memory, high-memory SKU consists of utilizing 12 DDR, DDR5 DIMMs operating at 6,400 megatransfers per second, in addition to using utilizing eight CXL attached DDR4 DIMMs located on the Wailua Falls. The use of DDR4 allows us to reuse DIMMs from our from decommissioned platforms in our data center, and this provides us the capability to save on costs and also help with our sustainability goals. With our fine-tuned configuration, using DC perf and results from our production workloads, we're able to see improvements in performance and performance per watt compared to previous generations. These capabilities and features, of course, have been heavily reliant on the performance and ability to turn. So I'll now pass to Jordan to share how AMD achieved this. Thanks, Abe. So Jordan Nicholas here from AMD. Uh, very excited to be here. Um, AMD has been a long contributor to the OCP uh, program, and uh, very excited to be sharing the stage here with Abe and, and Meta. And, and uh, very excited that uh, Meta has chosen Epic Turin to, to run the Sentinel Dome and to be part of the Yosemite uh, framework. So, uh, <clears throat> so let me jump a little bit, give you guys a little bit of background of Turin. So last week, we launched our fifth gen Epic processors, codenamed Turin. We live streamed this from the Moscone Center in San Francisco uh, just last week. 
where we unveiled all the details for our, our fifth gen processors. So it's based on our Zen 5 architecture, which we use on our, our client as well as our, our server-based uh, CPUs. Uh, this is based on Intel, on, on, sorry, on TSMC's Intel 3 and 4 nanometers. So these are the, uh, the processor core die, and um, in the middle we also have an I.O. die uh, that, that does all the DDR and, and PCI Express and so forth. We upped the number of uh, cores that we now support, so we now support over 190 cores and uh, 384 threads, so really continuing the leadership in core density. We've also introduced a new part at five gigahertz, and we did this to drive uh, host node processors for the GPUs. Uh, GPUs obviously are getting a lot of attention now uh, with AI, so AMD has uh, a lot of GPUs as, as well as NVIDIA who, who just spoke up here. We also are in, uh, now supporting full um, 512 data path for the, for the AVX 512. That increases our high performance computing, and we're, We've also rolled out more trusted I.O. for our confidential compute framework. This is all built on the SP5 platform. So our previous fourth gen generation, Genoa, uh, so you can use the Turin devices in existing um, servers that you have. Uh, we also bring the, uh, this platform or the Turin up to 500 watt TDP. Um, so increasing the capabilities of what the uh, server CPUs can do. <clears throat> Epic and, and AMD have been just focused as much as we can on performance. And this is giving us uh, the highest performance, performance per watt. And you can see one of the reasons why uh, Meta has chosen uh, Turin to drive their internal workloads as well as opening it up to the OCP community. So if we look at gen over gen performance, we're getting a 17% boost in IPC. And that's for the enterprise and cloud type workloads. And if you look at more of the high performance computing or the AI, we get over 37%. So very exciting performance numbers, gen over gen. And we continue to lead the industry in high performance uh, CPUs for, for servers. So let me talk a little bit about the two different flavors that we have. Uh, we have what we call a scale up and a scale out uh, based uh, CPUs. The first one is based on the Zen 5 uh, CCD. We have up to 16 of the CCDs uh, shown here in the picture on the left. Those are real pictures. So this is our high performance uh, device at 128 cores, 256 threads. On the right side, you see the scale out. This is this has up to 12 Zen 5 CCDs and up to 192 cores. These are based upon three nanometer, whereas the scale up were based on the four nanometer. So what you have on the right side is more power optimized, uh, higher dense cores. In, for, for a lot of the hyperscalers and, and scale out workloads. When we look at the performance across the board, uh, we're very excited with Turin and, and, and where Turin sits. So if we look at the spec int rate compared to Intel uh, CPUs that are available today, we see a 2.7x performance boost than what you can get. So very excited there. If we look at enterprise workloads, these are workloads like MySQL. So this is across a suite of different uh, uh, devices that we have. We see a 4x boost. And when we look at high performance computing, so we look at benchmarks like Gromax, for example, uh, we see a 3.9x boost in performance. And then AI is very important. It's very important for AMD. It's very important for OCP community. So what we did is we looked at what our uh, Turin processors can do for, say, inferencing and, uh, across, and, and the different aspects uh, that go along with, with inference. So we can see a 3.x boost in performance compared to uh, existing competition today. And then we talked about this 5 gigahertz device that we're now introducing with Turin. This is for us to be the leader in the host node sitting on top of AMD GPUs, or NVIDIA GPUs. 
And when we've done the benchmarks, whether it's uh, NVIDIA or AMD GPUs, just by selecting the right CPU, we can boost the performance of the entire system by up to 20%. Now, some people will say, hey, 20% is not that much, but if you just realize that you're just choosing the right CPU and the amount of money that those GPUs will cost, 20% can have a big impact in the overall performance of the system. So very excited that we've launched Turin, now uh, public for a week. And uh, if you'd like to get more information, it's all available now on our website. So I'll pass it back to Abe for cl to close us out. Thank you. So our call to action. So we encourage you to take a look at the capabilities and flexibility of Sentinel and consider it for your next compute solution. Specifications will be submitted within the next month, so please keep a lookout for the um, spec online at OCP. We plan to go in mass production sometime in Q2 25, so that means collateral will be available on Marketplace within six months, so that'll consist of design files such as schematic and layout. Also, we have a Sentinel Dome platform at the Meta booth, so please feel free to stop by and take a look um, and check it out if you'd like. Um, and yeah, that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? All right. Thank you, Abe. Thank you, George. Thank you, guys.